I have a record keeper. Unfortunately, I'm really just waiting on the dwarves to get this stuff built at this point. I guess I should point some temporary uh, masons here. high skill, just got to be able to come along, throw some bricks together, and get my pumps running. Come on, guys. We have architects. I have eight engineers who have architect skill. I'm not worried about architecture. It's masonry that's the problem. See? Masonry. Five masons, two workshops. You'd think somebody would have come along by now and built the damn thing. Come on, guys. I want to get these pumps done before I'm old. Oh, wait. Sorry. Too late. Ha! <laughs>
I didn't think Schist was in that list, but I wanted to double check. I need a few magma safe doors. I can make them out of glass if I have to, but I need a few to lock this up to make sure that if it magma does back flood, it's not going to hurt anything. I'm positive the build order I care about right here is this pump. That's the only build order I care about, just this one. It's the only thing. And right now they've finally decided to do it because it's now active. That's all I needed was somebody to come out and finally finish throwing the blocks together. Highest to lowest like this, we can basically move as much lava as we want from the bottom to the top in one tick. It will be like a flood. Now this will be architecture. But I'm waiting on the architect to actually get here. There's eight engineers, and they all have architecture, and they're all idle all a good chunk of the time because there's not really a whole lot for my trap builders to do when there aren't parts to build traps with. So... I think it's time we finally open this up and let uh, invaders try to get through if they want. With six of these to wade through and the problems of dodging if you fail, at that point uh, it's going to get pretty ugly pretty quick. And every one of these I add is basically just going to create another chance for somebody to dodge into the hole. I don't care how many XP it is, I care whether they get down there and get the job done or not. I got a lot of pumps to get built here before we're going to be finished with this little project to get this obsidian caster up and running. That's okay, it's in a cage for a reason. They can keep taming it there. I don't care. That just helps build up. I don't have anybody who has good animal train animal training skills, so I can leave those things in a cage and let them get tamed over and over and over and over again. I could probably do the same thing with the buzzards at this point if I really wanted to. The problem, the only problem I see with making your masons architects is a lot of times the guy that gets the architect job isn't the guy who gets the mason job. And you'll wander all the way down there to design the thing, and then he'll wander all the way back up while somebody else wanders down anyway, and we're not getting anything benefit, basically. A lot of times, yeah, they'll take the second task on themselves, but not every time.
Almost there. Two and a half hours to go, folks. Come on, engineer. Now this area isn't for any real significant purpose on its own, but if we have an accidental flood event where there's too much water cascades in, uh, this will give it a place to bleed off to so we can try to dry it up. No, actually, I don't care about clearing the stone. If if there's still stone left over when the caster is finally ready, oh god, damn it. always do that. Why? Always do that. Um, if there's stone left over, we'll simply forbid it, hide it, and cast it into the first obsidian blocks. And at that point, there is no more stone. That solves the problem most directly. We're not melting it in the magma. We'll flood the room with magma and we'll dump the water on it. We'll obsidianize everything in the room. There will be no stone left.
You're correct. It would take a while to melt. Obsidianization, however, is instantaneous. Great, so I've got some asshole who comes all the way down here and eats horned melon and doesn't actually finish my building here. Great, must be the architect. It's done, and the mason's on the way. Oh, good, finally the mason's on the way. There we go. Who died? A cat? Really? Huh. Maybe he wandered into the garbage pit and got shit tossed in on top of him. Well, it was a nice pet and all. I guess we can bury the bastard. Oh no, you did not forbid. You did not suspend my job for three fucking melon seeds laying on the middle of this damn thing. You certainly did not suspend my job for that. Not buying it. Seriously? Couldn't move the seeds two steps to the right? They can't be tasked. There's no way. I'm not buying that either. They're not tasked. Nope. Not a one of them. Game's been forbidden, or been suspending jobs all night long when there's no reason to suspend them. Pick the seeds up, move the seed to the right. Pick the seed up, move the seed to the right. There's no reason to... There's no reason to suspend that job. They moved one seed, then they couldn't move the others? Stack them up. Screw it. Dump them all. I don't care. Throw them in the garbage bin. Just get them out of my hair. There's, like I said, it's seeds. They can throw all the seeds together. They stack. This guy picked them all up at one go, so it's not like it's... Uh, just, I don't know. That's like Maya. I don't know if any of you out there have played Maya. It, I like the game. I really do. I, I'm looking forward to the final version. I really am. But the current alpha is like 0 0.5, 0 0.58, 0 0.59. I forget which. Um, and the problem is, is that most of the time it works really well. I mean, it's a fairly, uh, I want to say pseudo-realistic because of obviously it's it's got some gamist aspects over the top of its simulation. But it, it does a fair job of, of simulating you trying to build together a colony on a, on a harsh, un, unforgiving planet, you know. And the problem is, is that when it works, it works really well. When it doesn't, it doesn't work at all. Um, the pathfinding will suddenly break down, and it won't let you know that the pathfinding is broken down, for example. And so you're just, all of a sudden, you realize that nothing's getting built. Nothing's actually getting done. Um, your guys are just kind of meandering around aimlessly or standing around aimlessly not doing anything and eventually they'll starve to death if you don't catch it fast enough. 
when the game is working properly, it's it's very clear that progress is being made. You can see, I mean, I played it when I first came out, you know, back in 2013. It's you know, such a small team of developers, the progress has been glacially slow. You can see the progress that's been made if you go back and you looked at one of those original versions. But it's almost like the closer it gets to a, a respectable beta or a release, the more painful the flaws appear to me, I guess. This is the kind of stuff that I, I just, I don't expect Dwarf Fortress to be struggling with that kind of issue. Pathfinding is not a neural net. Architect's got to come down and do this part. And we've got one more pump after that. In this case, the problem really isn't that these guys have separate jobs so much as it is that the block, the tube, and the corkscrew are probably 40 levels above me, and they have to be hauled down individually one at a time to the pump. Because I didn't stockpile them down here, closer to where we're going to be using them. Which would have been smart, but, you know, what are you going to do, right? So now, if the mason is on the way, I wonder if I can do... And this should work, because in theory, the architect is going to come back and start in on this one while the mason is doing the other one. And this one will get done first, and that one will get done second. We hope, we hope, we hope. What's oops? I missed oops. What did we oops? Did we somebody lock themselves in when I wasn't looking? Yeah, no biggie. Uh, but it didn't. It didn't even. I don't even think it got designed. No, the architect hasn't even been here yet. A new wave of birds. Twenty-six birds being auto-butchered in this cycle now, so, you know, now we're getting to the point where we're starting to turn over our birds in large numbers every time they hatch.
Yeah, I'm not worried about this bridge because this bridge is going to be the least of our problems getting ready. Still have no instruments, are you kidding me? One instrument stored, yikes. Parts isn't really my problem. It's just a matter of waiting at this point. Everything's there. We've got to put some doors in place to make sure the magma doesn't overflow. Just in case, we'll be covered that way. I gotta link up the floodgate to a lever. I have to add a door here, which will be lever access only. And then I have to add a 
linkage for this bridge once it's done. Which shouldn't be that much longer at this point, I don't believe. Unfortunately, it won't tell me how many are actually in the building while it's being constructed for the bridge, which is kind of a pain. Yeah, but there's really no reason why they shouldn't have done it by now. I have, like, a ton of stone crafters, a ton of wood carvers, a ton of bone crafters. Somebody's had to have had the idle time to build the parts for whatever this thing is. They just haven't done it. Something else keeps jumping in front of them, probably. I mean, at this point, they should be all over this Esbel Bell's job, and I don't even know what it requires. Wood, it looks like. Some kind of wood. You can't tell me we don't have wood, because, I mean, like, right above it is a whole platform of wood. It's just somebody with wood crafting has to come down here and make it, and they haven't done it. But I'm pretty sure I have, like, three carpenters. I only have two carpenter shops. I have two reasonably skilled woodcrafters who could theoretically do that job, but they're all too busy moving stuff to stockpiles, apparently. I thought hauling used to be a low-priority job. Am I misremembering? Hauling used to be simple to get dwarfs to do. You simply turned off everything else. Hauling was a low-priority labor. There was nothing wrong with that. That meant your craftsmen would concentrate on building stuff until they couldn't build, and then they would haul if they couldn't build anything, which is fine. That was exactly what you wanted to have happen. Oh, well, yeah, I know that problem, where the, there was just so much to harvest that they, would, they wouldn't get to it all, basically. Yeah, I've had that problem. And I'll admit, that's better. But I'm not sure that having hauling... Harvesting is fine, but hauling is a separate task.
I have dwarves that basically haul because that allows my craftsmen to be free to do nothing but craft. If all of their goods eventually end up on site and all of their output ends up hauled away and they don't have to do anything other than take one step to the input, one step to the output, that's ideal for crafting. And the way that was achieved under the old system was to devote dwarves specific to the hauling task to make sure that things got hauled. With hauling being a higher priority in the new system, the hauling definitely gets done, but it also means that if your craftsmen have hauling, now they will get... they will do hauling instead. So now I have to turn hauling off on my craftsmen a lot of the time. Well, I didn't normally anyway. You wouldn't have before. The difference was is that they would have switched into hauling after they were done crafting. Now you have to manually turn it on if you want them to be able to do that when they're idle. It's actually created more manual interference. Improving the the priority of harvesting, I don't have a problem with that at all. That was a, that was a fa that's a fantastic change. But but harvesting and hauling are not necessarily the same task. And I don't think that improving the priority of harv or of, of hauling was necessarily a good change. something to drink guys I got a frog in my throat here pretty bad hold on I don't normally have a problem with refuse hauling once I set up the the appropriate refuse collection orders in a garbage zone. My tannery is usually close enough to the central staircase or to the garbage dump itself that that stuff gets pitched out pretty quickly.
How do we not have an empty bucket? Are you kidding me? Are we like destroying our buckets every time we use one? Seriously. Nothing in that one. Why can't you use it? Nothing in that one. Apparently somebody needs a whole lot of barrels to store their lye in, or some pots to store their lye in, because we are seriously filling up buckets with lye. Well, since they still aren't doing these tasks, I'm going to go ahead and clear them all out. And we'll just build rock pots here for a moment. Yeah, that's just it. I found three or four buckets in the list that clearly had nothing in them, according to the description. Nothing in them. And it's telling me they didn't have an empty bucket. There's no way. I've been buying buckets. I've got 30 or 40 buckets at this point that somebody's got to have an empty bucket somewhere. There's no way. I found three or four in the list as we were going through them that were clearly empty. Something's up. Yeah, I guess I can. I thought we had a soap making workshop in place, but maybe I didn't queue up the jobs. And the problem here is going to be that we can't specify generic soap, can we? Can't do it, can we? Because each one is going to count as a material and just soap is not a suitable material here. So there's all sorts of places where generic items like this, we need to be able to specify soap. Let's see if I'm looking in the wrong category. We'll change the item type a little bit. Nope, it's a material bar, so there's not much I can do with that. I just have to basically say if not bars 40 billion and then go from there.
Okay, and that'll get people making soap, so that's good. And we can store all our soap right there next to the workshop is fine. People will come snag a bar when they need it. Uh, there's a few different kinds of nut oils, not just rock nut oil that you can press. Um... And that's pretty much it. It's tallow and various types of seed oils, basically. But with the expansion of the different types of plants now, it really is a variety of oils and not just the one kind. I'd have to look. Hang on a moment, because I don't keep track off the top of my head. Hold on. Let me double check out here, because I'm pretty sure it'll tell you. Oh, let me take a second here and look. The following crops produce seeds that can be milled and pressed into oil. Quarry bushes, rock nuts, cotton, flax, hemp. Kanaf, or is it canal? Kanaf. Kanaf and olives can all be pressed for oil, at which point you can take the oil and then make soap. No, apparently not pecans and most of those nuts, but there are seeds, you know, the the standard cotton flax seeds that you'd see in or on earth pressed for oil. I'm surprised there's no sunflowers. You know, we would have pressed those for oil. Yeah, just fibers for the most part. And rock nuts. Gotta love rock nuts. In fact, we should probably get a screw press up because we don't have one. 